Hello, everybody. Uh, I think we have quorum. Ben, are we good to start? Uh, yeah, it looks like we're good to start. We've got a few people just coming in on the attendees now. We'll give, um, it, a, we'll give it a couple of minutes before we kick off and we are, uh, we'll are we wait for Val, our CEO, to join. He's in he's in Davos currently uh, at the World, World Economic, Economic Forum annual meeting. So as soon as Val uh, joins, we will uh, kick off. Brilliant. Here's Val. Terrific. Okay, so we can we can jump right in um, as people are joining. So yeah, I, I, we've got some big news to share. I'm not going to certainly not going to steal uh, Val's thunder. I'm Dominic Weeks, head of external affairs at Zero Avia. I'm joined in the room with in the hangar in uh, Kemble uh, by Gabrielle Teofili, our head of aircraft integration testing, and Val joins us from Davos. So without further ado, we'll hand over to Val. Val, you can give us kind of the update of of what we've uh, achieved today, and then. We can play a short video, um, I can play that from this machine, uh, and then we can jump into some questions uh, as and when people are ready. So Val, over to you. Thank you, Dominic, thank you. Um, and uh, welcome everybody. This is really a historic day for uh, aviation, for sustainable aviation. Um, uh, we have just at Zero Avia, we have completed uh, our first uh, test flight of the world's largest uh, hydrogen electric aircraft uh, now in the air. Uh, this is a 20 seat uh, vehicle that we have just um, taken to the sky and successfully landed uh, at uh, our uh, R&D location at Cotswold Airport in the UK. Uh, this is a culmination of uh, years of work uh, at Zero Avia and of course um, uh, we're excited to uh, announce this today and um, I'm sitting here um, standing rather at uh, the annual um, uh, World Economic Forum meeting. Uh, so what uh, better venue to announce this uh, and um, uh, really celebrate um, as the entire industry. This is a, a full commercial size engine, full commercial size aircraft. Uh, this is uh, putting us uh, straight on the path to commercial launches of this uh, technology, uh, this aircraft with all the um, demands that we see from uh, uh, all the airlines that we were able to sign up uh, uh, to fly these uh, vehicles, these engines. Uh, this is really gives uh, everybody confidence that this is a um, really a practical technology with the launch very soon. And we will see this in commercial use uh, in just uh, a couple of short years. Um, so, uh, really great uh, moment, and uh, now back uh, to you, Dom, uh, for a video. Yeah, and apologize for any background noise that we have on our end, because we've got some some kind of uh, fairly big celebrations happening with our team down there. Uh, <laughs> we're obviously very excited by the by the achievement today. Uh, so, what we'll do, we'll just we'll just play the film, and uh, Gabriele Val add any commentary as you see fit. So, I'm just going to share screen if people will bear with me, uh, and we will roll VT. Oh, sorry, from the start would probably be helpful. There's no audio because this will be B-roll. We will release this at about four, uh, four o'clock along with the press release um, and, and some pictures as well. Yeah, we're just seeing the, the taxi to the top of the runaway. It will be the starting point. We see the release of vapor from our fuel cell. Acceleration, wind is calm today. The takeoff, this moment is still very emotional for all of us. And then the climb without landing gear, landing gear up, of course. Some uh, control during flight to understand if the aircraft is flying well and the approach. There will be the descent, the flare, and uh, a touchdown. And you cannot hear it, but uh, we have had a stadium in this airport, which was our great team uh, in front of the tower, applauding like if it was in one of the football stadium, which was very, very, very emotional. So here it is coming back. And then now it's inside the hangar. We made a nice celebration with all the team, thanking everybody and it's champagne time for them. <laughs> so brilliant. So um, a beautiful day here at Cotswold Airport. If we have, um any 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 requests for any of this as i mentioned will be made uh available at four o'clock um, as the press release goes live but what i would suggest we do is just any other comments gabrielli val 
otherwise, we can move um, straight into any questions from the journalists in attendance. Uh, no, from my side, I think uh, Bal uh, uh, told the right words, which is uh, is the 20-seater is the heaviest, and largest aircraft ever flown with hydrogen electric powertrain. It's the result of a work of zero Avia employees. It's all done by our hands, the integration, the testing, and now the flight. It's also a great milestone, not only for us, but for the whole ecosystem, I would say. And for us, this milestone is not at the end of a journey, but it's the beginning of a journey. It's the beginning of the flight test campaign. It's the beginning of a moment where we are going to learn and to accelerate the next phase, which is the entry into service, the commercialization of the same engine uh, in uh, the same type of aircraft. So it's a great moment. Uh, I'm looking forward to start working back tomorrow for that second part of the journey. Terrific, great. And we have um, we have two questions in the chat already. So we'll start with the, the first um, from, from Casey. So were you able to turn off the battery backup on the left engine at any point? Or, what, or a secondary question, what percentage of the power to the left engine did the fuel cell system provide? I will answer that. So there is no, uh, it was no plan to turn off anything today for safety, of course. We needed to first make a check if everything is working fine. We had 50% uh, of the power given by the fuel cell, 50% of the power given by batteries, and everything worked as expected. Chubby. And then uh, from, uh, from Tim, so congratulations on the first flight milestone. How long will the flight test campaign last? Will it include route proving passenger flights? Do I go on? Uh, so flight test campaign, we have started in June and July with commissioning on ground, uh, August and September with ground tests up to fast taxi on the runaway, and then October and November with confidence on endurance test, uh, and then we uh, submitted the test results to the CAA for the release of the permit to fly, and after that it was a long waiting time of pain, waiting for the right day, because the weather was not helpful in the last 30 days. So this is the very first day since the 21st of December where we can fly and we did it. Yeah, and I, I think um, uh, the question is about uh, the further flights um, in this flight test campaign. So we expect to have uh, between 10 to 20 flights um, in this uh, test campaign, including uh, uh, long dura longer duration flights, uh, including the flights where we will um, uh, demonstrate operation uh, only on uh, on hydrogen as well, um, and uh, the results of this test campaign will feed into the uh, uh, final iteration of the design of the engine uh, that we are uh, then will be submitting for certification towards the end of the year. Brilliant, Val. And then we have a, another question here from Charles Alcock, um, uh, Aircraft Commerce. So, which aircraft will be the first to enter commercial service in 2025? Will it be the Dornier 228 or another model? Uh, and then a supplementary question on whether certification will be specific to each aircraft to be converted or i.e. through a supplemental type certificate and will it be through EASA? So uh, a few different questions there to take. I don't know if you want to take those one by one. Yeah, so maybe one by one. Um, so on the launch aircraft, uh, we have not announced yet uh, the launch aircraft, uh, but it will be uh, uh, aircraft of um, uh, this category. Uh, it's part 23 category, uh, 10 to 20 seat aircraft. Um, we already have a uh, airframe partner uh, that we're working with uh, quite closely on that aircraft uh, uh, adaptation of the engine and um, we'll announce it uh, very shortly uh, on the certification path. And I will let uh, Gabriella maybe comment uh, on it in more detail. Uh, our approach is to uh, certify uh, the power plants under um, the power plant category for, with type certificate and STC for the um, supplemental type certificate on a per airframe basis. And now, Gabrielle, if you want to add anything. Not special. The question was about EASA. We are in the UK, so we are working very, very closely with the Civil Aviation of UK to establish a certification basis, which is going to be harmonized with EASA and FAA. So we are not targeting a single country for the entry into service, but of course, European and American world through the United Kingdom civil aviation. Great, and then a, a question from uh, Don Perry at Flight Global. So is the intent to launch with the Dornier 228 or to use another platform, probably the Grand Caravan, which we obviously kind of covered that, um, Val. 
Um, and then a bit more of a question, what could the flight test campaign look like there? So I think we probably covered that, Don, but I don't know if you have anything else you want to follow up with there uh, with, an, with another question or to exp expand on that a little bit more. Um, okay, terrific. Uh, Maybe okay. I can ask, I can add a couple of points on that uh, flight test campaign. So today, of course, was the first flight. We needed to, we need to download the data and to see if uh, everything went right as we saw during the telemetry check. But we're going to fly into the maximum altitude, to the maximum speed, the maximum weight to try to exhaust the permit to fly the flight envelope we have today and then uh, uh, extend uh, together with CAA the capability of the power train we have today. The most important thing is learning how the fuel cell behaves in flight, how the electrical propulsion system behaves in flight and uh, bring this learning to the uh, next stage of development so that can be faster. And uh, we will try to stretch it as much as possible. Fantastic. And then uh, questions from Sylvia Pfeiffer of the FT. Um, so I'll just take the first one, Sylvia. So the, the flight test was around 10 minutes. Um, and then you also ask, I think this is probably one for you, Val, which commercial customer will receive the first delivery of the aircraft? Uh, do you need to raise more money before commercial service starts? So two questions there for you, Val. Yeah, so um, we're working with a number of operators now um, to uh, place them on the timeline um, of deliveries. Uh, we have uh, across the uh, uh, different engine variants, um, uh, we have about 1500 orders, uh, pre-orders uh, for our engines um, that uh, span number of uh, different aircraft types and um, uh, different power levels, uh, probably uh, over the five or five to six years of uh, deliveries. Um, so one of those operators will be the launch operator. But uh, between 600 and 700 of those uh, 1500 engines are for this size engine. Uh, so it's quite substantial volume uh, for that as well. And um, we'll uh, announce the uh, launch operator uh, shortly as well, as long as uh, at, at the same time as um, uh, we will announce the uh, launch airframe. Great. And then there was a second question there from Sylvia on the, uh, the, the uh, need to raise more money. Before. Oh, correct. Yes. Uh, on the uh, on the need to raise. Yeah. So we uh, will be um, uh, raising additional funds uh, to uh, support the commercialization uh, of the engine. Um, and uh, now with a successful test flights uh, of the uh, full size engine and um, uh, the further test flight campaign that is uh, upcoming, we feel uh, uh, quite confident uh, in the support of our investors uh, and uh, uh, new investors that will come in. Terrific. And then I will uh, uh, push this one back to you as well, Val, but Gabrielli, uh, jump in. But uh, Tim Robinson, Aerospace Magazine, what is the biggest challenge now in bringing this tech to market? Uh, back to Gabriella, but this is really about uh, certification now. So we know the technology works um, and we know it works uh, at the right scale. Uh, we know the market uh, is there for it. Uh, we have our partners, our investors and the operator partners um, that are uh, looking forward to it. They've uh, put in uh, real money and orders um, into uh, uh, the company for this size aircraft, uh, this size uh, power plants. So now it's all about uh, pushing this uh, to the final design iteration and certification. Uh, Gabriel, over to you on maybe to expand on that uh, from the certification side, thanks. Yeah, for a certification, of course, uh, it's the path towards entry into service. So we have to run this path. We know how to do it in the aerospace. It's uh, difficult, uh, but it's not impossible. Like we used to say, everything was difficult before it was done. And now we have done one part of the journey. The other part is probably adding about supply chain and infrastructure, not in terms of uh, only hydrogen refueling or hydrogen infrastructure, but the whole ecosystem. So the flight today was a demonstration that this technology is there and is ready to be developed up to our entry into service. Uh, we cannot do everything alone. We need the whole ecosystem to work together with us or to run with us because we don't work and, uh, and go in that direction. So probably convincing everybody is also a big challenge. Fantastic. And then a question from Ulrich Ebner uh, with Flug Review. What is the maximum duration the modified Dornier 228 is able to fly? Great question. Yeah, thank you for that. We have done the endurance test, which is uh, reproducing the maximum duration of flight on ground. We have reviewed it several times. And uh, we go with all the safety measurement uh, up to 25 uh, minutes roundabout. 
Um, that's what's going to happen probably at the end of the first phase of the fight test campaign. Try to reach that range and then probably extend it in different ways. Fantastic. Okay. Um, Christopher, you asked also about the flight time and, and how long it could have flown for, which I think Gabrielli uh, has answered there to a degree. But we, uh, we have, uh, it was it was around 10 minutes for the flight. Yeah. And we had a, a, a ty uh, typo in our initial um, embargoed release. So just uh, 10 minutes for the initial flight. Uh, how many commitments do you have? Uh, oh, does it have I heard somebody there or somebody online speaking? Okay, and Charles again uh, from Aircraft Commerce, how many commitments do you uh, know you have from airlines? Are airlines making deposits on provisional orders? Wow. So um, as I mentioned, between 600 and 700 of our 1500 orders um, are for this size engine. Um, and um, uh, on the deposit side, uh, we are actually starting to call deposits uh, for um, the delivery slots uh, this year. Uh, back to Casey, uh, uh, do you have a timeline in mind for demonstrations at other airports and are those still planned for the US? Question mark. Yes, um, absolutely. We will have uh, flight test campaigns um, around the world um, as this was just the first uh, successful uh, takeoff and landing uh, and we we're looking to uh, showcase the technology uh, across the world uh, in different uh, airports. and. Uh, Importantly, also, we, um, we are, of course, are working on already on the uh, next size engine. And uh, there will be uh, some significant demonstrations coming um, on the uh, uh, two megawatt class uh, engine, uh, first on the ground and then in flight uh, soon as well. And um, that will have uh, also a wide geographic uh, footprint. So stay tuned for that. Splendid. Uh, and then, Mark, just you, you, you asked a question about the uh, Power answer on takeoff. Um, I think you, Gabrielle, you, you answered that earlier. But I answered uh, uh, that zero avia engine is composed by 50% of battery and 50% of fuel cell, and uh, it's all uh, connected together. So we, we don't split between zero avia engine and the rest. Uh, it's all coming together at the end to the propulsion system of course. Yeah, and to and to just to make clear, so that it's the hydrogen electric system uh, on the left wing and the conventional stock engine on the right wing. So uh, dual redundancy there for safety. Um, okay, so then Mark, you've asked a follow up question. Was the plan for a ten minute flight? Was it shortened or extended for any reason? Ten minute flight was the plan. Ten minute was the flight at the end. Uh, it was half or less than half of the total range for obvious safety reasons. Okay, so uh, brilliant. And then Ben Sampson, uh, large, largest engine tested to date. Was the CA600 or a prototype? Who made the fuel cells and what type were they? Um, either of you, I think, could probably take that one. I can start. Uh, yeah. Oh. Uh, it, this was the zero hour 600 uh, kilowatt prototype for uh, the demonstrator flight. No, there is no engine which is a, a type, which is a product until it's type certified. So there will be all prototypes so far. Uh, it's the generation of engine who is changing from uh, test to test. Who made the fuel cell? Want to go? Well, yeah. So uh, this is uh, uh, together with our partner, uh, PowerCell. Um, uh, supplying the fuel cell stacks uh, that we, uh, uh, together with them, uh, uh, modify for um, aircraft utilization. And as uh, many might have seen, uh, we have announced um, quite deep collaboration with PowerCell um, uh, late last year um, for the joint design and manufacturing of the uh, stacks for uh, uh, the certified, uh, certifiable version of the uh, uh, power plants. Fantastic. Good. Uh, Charles Alcock again, just asking a question about uh, when you make the first flights with hydrogen only power, will you install the new powertrain on both sides of the aircraft? I can go at the moment, not, uh, but uh, everything is possible. We have just to start learning and uh, we have the powertrain on the left. On the right side is the normal gas turbine for uh, having a, a full safety case in this first prototypical flight. Uh, we will probably uh, run towards the extension of range and the maximization of learning of the behavior of the fuel cell. Uh, learning from the left hand or learning from both engine is the same in terms of fuel cell learning, so I don't see the difference. 
Yeah, and uh, to add on that, in the commercial configuration uh, of the uh, of the aircraft, um, the uh, uh, of course the entire uh, the entire power plant uh, will be uh, all the power plants will be um, uh, hydrogen electric, and all the power will be supplied by the fuel cells. Fantastic. Uh, then we have a couple of questions here um, relating to, I guess, a bit more detail on the on the flight. Graham uh, Aviation Week asks about the volume of, of hydrogen and, and generally provide a few more details on the system in the aircraft. Um, so we'll, we'll, I guess whatever we can we can add there. And then both Mark and Graham, uh, Mark Pilling and Graham Warwick have asked about the speed, um, mm -hmm. altitude, etc. Well, a couple of uh, general points. We have flown up to 2,000 feet of altitude. Um, speed, practically the rotation speed, uh, it's around about 80, 90 knots. And uh, today we have reached 120 knots as planned in uh, cruise. And that's more or less what we want to have also from the maximum value we will get afterwards. Okay, so then on to, on to Philip, uh, Philip Butterworth-Hayes. Uh, do EU, UK and US regulators share identical roadmaps for regulating this aircraft? So Val, I will put that question uh, over to you. I'll actually throw it back to Gabriel. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. The roadmap is a big word in terms of schedule. Uh, we are here, therefore there is a lot of attention to our certification basis and to have a, a common uh, UK EASA certification, but it's not enough for us because we cannot launch all in the in Europe. So we will carry, I would say, pull also the FAA towards the same schedule. In terms of roadmap for certification basis, we need to have a full harmonization. So what I was speaking about uh, ecosystem working together that we cannot do it alone. What we are what we are doing is also bringing the different civil aviation together and establish a, a single way of working. Otherwise, we will be forced to certify in different ways. Uh, regarding the, the countries. And uh, that's what we, we are doing. We started with CA. It's a very nice collaboration. And uh, they allow us to speak directly and indirectly through them with FAA and the ASA. And that's working very fine at the moment. And the uh, certification approach to add to that is uh, uh, primary certification authority for uh, ZA600 engine of this class is CAA, as Gabriela mentioned. Um, the, the plan is uh, concurrent validation uh, with the uh, other authorities. So uh, the launch into service um, will be substantially simultaneous uh, across the markets. Thank you. Uh, Christopher from Green Air Online, how do you currently see the ground infrastructure challenge at airports? So again, Val, I'll put that one to you. Yeah, great. Uh, so um, actually, we uh, spent a lot of time on uh, uh, ground infrastructure as well. Zerada has uh, some of the uh, largest energy companies like Shell as um, uh, our partners on the infrastructure side and uh, investors uh, in the company. Um, so we are looking to uh, orchestrate uh, bringing infrastructure to the airports. Uh, we believe that um, the best approach to uh, building infrastructure is uh, on-site production of uh, hydrogen by electrolysis that avoids transportation of this fuel um, uh, over long distances. This is the most economical way to produce fuel and also the fastest way to deploy um, such infrastructure. We already have partnerships with uh, over 10 airports uh, for these initial launches. Uh, some of these we've uh, announced uh, over the uh, number of months. And uh, of course, um, that airport footprint also takes into account our uh, airline commitments um, that are already looking to uh, start flying uh, these aircraft. Uh, and um, together with uh, the airlines, the airports, and the energy uh, companies that support us, uh, we are quite confident that we'll have the infrastructure to support our launch. Uh, thank you. And then um, Tim has a, Tim asked the question about uh, the incident with the Piper Malibu demonstrator, and he, uh, he says, uh, from an external perspective, this didn't seem to slow you down. So anything to, to respond to on that part? Well, I don't think it slowed us down to the entry into service. Um, of course, um, in the immediate aftermath uh, of uh, the incident, we had to uh, uh, launch, uh, we launched um, a thorough investigation and we took our time to understand uh, the root causes and uh, take uh, all the correct actions. And I think that actually helped uh, the company mature uh, quite a bit um, uh, through the um, following months uh, so that um, we're able to build up uh, to uh, 
this larger aircraft on the full flight permit with um, all the uh, safety protocols um, and uh, redundancies, uh, full part 145 operation um, uh, with uh, all the required audits um, and uh, proper processes around the design organization and production organization. So the company is really now in a very mature state um, and uh, uh, that will help us um, uh, with uh, confidence on the timeline to enter into service uh, now that we have uh, this aircraft uh, in uh, flight test. Uh, we had a bit of slowing down there on it. I mean, it may have been just our internet connection, so hopefully everyone got that by anything we missed a word or two. Um, so I think we are we are fine there. Um, Casey, uh, again, Casey Crownhart asks about um, this flight being scheduled originally for last summer, and can we share any details about why it took a little longer than expected to fly? Yeah, as with any uh, new technology, um, when you put things for the first time, uh, there are significant learnings um, as you do it. Uh, as uh, Gabriella mentioned, uh, uh, precursor to this uh, flight permit and the flight um, was a uh, quite thorough uh, ground testing campaign uh, that had uh, significant test milestones. And uh, the learnings from that uh, resulted in further um, iterations on the engine design um, that, again, will help us uh, to get to a certified version uh, quicker. Uh, so those iterations is um, what the company decided to do uh, before we had our first uh, flight. And that resulted in some of the uh, uh, delays that you're mentioning. And then, of course, as Gabriella mentioned, between the uh, um, the flight permit itself and the first flight, um, uh, there is almost a month uh, uh, difference uh, due to uh, weather conditions in the UK. And some of those weather conditions actually affected our uh, timeline of ground tests um, in the uh, in the fall and winter uh, preceding the uh, um, uh, flight test permit. Um, so hopefully that uh, answers the question. And I think uh, so Ed, Ed, uh, from, Ed from Aerospace Manufacturing Magazine also asks about um, ramping up for production of the engine and we had a had a question earlier sorry which i did miss out which was about where uh and when and the plans for for manufacture so i don't know if you want to just give a little bit of info on, on ramping up for production of the engine and and uh and manufacturing excellent question and um we're actually um last year we have launched um, the manufacturing site search um as you can imagine with uh 600, 700 um, engines on pre-order uh, starting from 2025. Um, the manufacturing uh, uh, capacity needs to be uh, built out uh, um, over this year and next year. And then the trial runs will start uh, next year off the uh, small series production. Um, so we have already invested um, a lot of time in selecting the sites. Uh, there are uh, uh, short lists uh, for sites um, and uh, we'll be making a decision in the uh, following months. Um, and then uh, as we make a decision, we will announce uh, the specific locations. Good. Um, what was the takeoff weight of the 228, please? Ask yeah. Mark. First, probably just to say, it's the first time I make a first flight with uh, less than the maximum takeoff weight. <laughs> We flew with 5,650, which is uh, around about 50 kilograms below the maximum of weight of the Type 35 aircraft. And uh, probably I can answer the second question yes, well, with some system detail. So we discussed about the power generation system, 50% given power from the fuel cell, 50% from the batteries, power distribution, thermal management made by Zero Avia, <laughs> and uh, electrical power system, so the four for engines uh, and uh, the inverters in the nacelle on the left side of the aircraft. Uh, that's so simple as it's spoken, despite the time we have used for developing and testing it, yeah. Brilliant, and if, uh, Dave, Graham, if you have more detailed questions, of course, we can follow up, we can follow up after on those. Um, uh, at, at what size system do you move from gaseous to liquid hydrogen, Don Perry Flight Global asks. Uh, so I'll, I'll, I'll pass on to you, Val. Yeah, so for our um, larger, uh, aircraft uh, systems um, that um, are going into uh, larger turboprops, um, so 70 to 80 seats in size. Uh, that's where we move to cryogenic liquid storage um, in the aircraft. Uh, the propulsion system tests uh, already ongoing uh, for that um, at the component level, and uh, fully integrated tests are uh, upcoming in the uh, in the following uh, weeks, um, and we will update uh, uh, everybody as they go. 
And then Mark uh, again follows up on the manufacturing question. So where do you envisage production of the Zero Avenue certified engine to take place? Is that decided question mark? So I think we, uh, we've covered that uh, question just a couple of minutes ago. Yeah. Uh, okay. And then uh, finally from, from Graham is the, the last question we have in currently, do you have a, do you have DOA and POA, POA yet? So we don't, we are not officially this organization or production organization approved, but we have received the permit to fly from the CAA based on our processes, which are the, uh, I would say the, the baseline to get in the in the direction. We are going to apply for this organization in the next quarter, followed by product organization approval application as well. As uh, Gabriele mentioned, the uh, entire process books um, for uh, DOA and POA have been developed uh, and followed uh, uh, by Zeravia. Um, and of course, uh, our process have been uh, also reviewed um, uh, by the respective authorities uh, as part of the uh, uh, flight test, uh, uh, flight permits um, application. Uh, but we will get the formal uh, approvals uh, for the DOA and POA uh, on the timeline, as uh, Gabriela mentioned. All right, I think that brings us to the uh, end of the list of questions submitted so far. Um, just Val, I'll give, give over to you to for any closing remarks, just in case in the in the interim, the next minute or so, um, some of the attendees have other questions they want to pose. But uh, yeah, anything to, to kind of summarize? Uh, just to close again, it's an outstanding day, uh, not just for Zeravia, uh, not just for aviation, uh, but also uh, for the world as um, uh, aviation is becoming a larger and larger contributor to climate uh, uh, change, and um, we really, really need solutions. Um, if uh, you look at the total uh, climate impact of humanity, um, aviation is already uh, between 5 and 10%. Um, uh, the carbon part of that is only 3%, but they're all non-carbon sources that are effectively can be addressed only by hydrogen electric uh, power plants. Um, and that's why Zero Avi is focusing on hydrogen electric as, uh, as a development um, uh, target. And uh, today uh, we have witnessed uh, a major step uh, towards achieving that goal. A lot of work still to do, uh, but uh, let's collectively celebrate uh, the achievement um, uh, for everybody and uh, move to the next steps. Appreciate everybody's uh, time and uh, attention. And if there are no questions. There's one further question. I think we can, this is our final question then, and then wrap up. Um, but it's how many electric motors are part of the propulsion system of the Dorney 8228? Well, I can answer in many different ways. An electric motor is not uh, only what you see inside the single housing, but uh, you have to check what is inside the housing. So there may be one motor with four winding system or four motors on stack. So we have a sort of four times redundancy in this aircraft. And the formally, or let's say officially, it's four electric motors inside our motor stack. Splendid. Okay, great. Some, some fantastic questions. Um, so thank you everybody for their time. If uh, other questions come to you as the, um, the news will be announced in 10 minutes or so, um, and the, uh, the, all the uh, media will be available then, uh, the resources, um, please do get in touch, uh, press at zeroavia.com, and we will do our best to answer very quickly, uh, make sure you get the answers you need for any uh, articles that you may be writing. Um, so thank you. Uh, thanks, Val. Thanks, Gabrielli. Um, and thanks for all the questions.